Okay, okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's Lunch and Learn. So my announcement is I'm thinking about renaming this Lunch and Learn to Shamber, which is Sharon and Amber. This is the strategy specialist and the and the nonprofit plug Lunch and Learn. And I just thought it'd be so cool. We call this the Shamber Lunch and Learn. What do you guys think? <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was the exact reaction that I wanted. This is perfect. Amber, what do you think? We call it, this is now Shamber's Lunch and Learn. I forget who has the uh, the name combos, all those celebrities, but we're way more impactful. So we're going to go. I, I just see in the chat box from Nikia. Nah, Nikia, we're going we're gonna to make the Shamber. Yeah. <laughs> all right, you guys. Well, welcome today to today's Lunch and Learn. Today is going to be the impact of storytelling. So let me just kind of introduce our guest speaker to you all today. And then I will hand it off so we can spend the whole rest of the time on impact. So we are going to be talking about telling secrets to get of storytelling to get you guys funding. So of course, there's so many different opportunities to bring funds into your organization. Everyone needs money to run programming, to pay salaries, et cetera. So we want to bring you guys every kind of opportunity possible. So with us today, we have Evan. He is an award-winning storyteller and filmmaker, and he's going to kind of go into his story. So I don't even want to I don't even want to not do him justice because I cannot because this man is super talented AF. So we will get him going over to today and then we'll kind of it's an open session. You guys already know we like to keep it informal. So if there's questions, definitely hit them in the chat box and Josie will get us those questions. Um, you can raise a hand if you want to, but all we want to do is give you guys impact. So Evan, I'm going to hand it off to you. We are so excited to have you today. Um, and let's get some uh, storytelling tricks and tips so we can get these folks some more money opportunities. Awesome. Thank you so much for the introduction, Dr. Sharon. Uh, I just want to start by saying I'm super grateful to get the opportunity to provide value to this group. Uh, anyone who's out there in the world who's trying to create a, a better difference, um, who's impact driven, purpose driven is really like like this group is who lights me up the most to work with. So I'm just super stoked to be here. Uh, so I got started uh, as a filmmaker and honestly, I, I was, I used to be, and still am very nervous to get up in front of the camera, talk about, you know, myself, like I, I get anxiety around it. I had anxiety when I was younger. So to anyone who feels that way behind the camera, I want to let you know that what I'm teaching today I want to let you know that you are more than capable of implementing all of the strategies and everything that I'm sharing, because at one point I was literally uh, dealing with such bad anxiety, depression that I, I lost all my friends. I lost all contact to everyone. It was, it was bad. Anyways, not to get into that too much, but really what, what I did was I pushed through that anxiety. I still went off to college. I went to San Diego state university where I learned filmmaking. I won some awards for some, some films, but really what completely changed my trajectory and changed my purpose was when my family almost lost their house. So uh, my, my little brother growing up, he was diagnosed with autism when he was two years old. And throughout our lives, my family sacrificed everything to, to keep him and keep our family together and keep him safe and healthy because he was very uh, low functioning, nonverbal, needed 24 seven hour care. And it got to the point where as he grew, grew older, I was I went off to college and it started to become very difficult for my family to take care of my brother, even with both my, my mom and my dad um, helping and, and with respite, other support. Uh, it, it got to the point where one day I was off doing some film shoot and I actually missed the call, but he had accidentally fallen through the window of our front living room because he was having an outburst. And when that happened, it the window came down and actually cut him. And it was really bad. Um, he luckily, uh, my uncle was able to get over in time and, and help him out. And then the paramedics came. But it was a moment, a very, you know, I, I still remember when I finally got, I noticed all the calls I missed and I got on the phone with my dad. I just remember hearing for the first time, really realizing that um, my, my family might lose the, the the house that we grew up in that my, my me and my brother grew up in and my my dad essentially told me bub you know this this is i don't think we can continue doing this I, we're gonna have to sell the house and he's taking all time off of work and so 
that was when I really realized, okay, I need to do something here. It's, this is where I take a stand for my family and I, I have these tools. What can I do? And so I just looked at what is my skill set? I can tell their story. And I, I remember before prior times where my family, you know, this was probably the third time the house was going to be foreclosed on. And prior times, there was they always found a way through it. But this time, um, I remember asking them, can we can we do a GoFundMe? Can we try to get some funds? And everyone said, you know, my, my family said, well, we tried that and it really doesn't hasn't brought really any results. You know, we posted the GoFundMe before and nothing. So I I took it, you know, I, I remember just telling them because they don't understand, you know, like ever since I was young and, you know, I remember being six years old in restaurants and my, my parents bringing my brother and he would be yelling and screaming and just people looking like, like looking at my parents because they don't understand that he's mentally disabled. One mother came up and said, you ruined our meal, discipline your son. And so that was kind of what we dealt with growing up. We dealt with that misunderstanding from people. And it's the same type of misunderstanding that I'm sure people who are homeless or people who are less fortunate or dealing with struggle go through on a daily basis, a, a blanket judgment, a general outlook from the public. And so one thing that I really knew was that storytelling had the power when I went and I told a story, um, a narrative, a, a screenplay that I wrote, um, and it was about a kid who was homosexual in a very, in a very um, conservative Texas town. And that was the story I remember because I, I was reading all these articles. And I just remember that that after that that movie premiered, the short film, so many people came up after going, I didn't realize. So I knew, okay, how do we do this? And so this is where essentially um, today I wanted to start just to kind of give you give you all that that context of, of how storytelling can really create massive impact and how brands, all the most successful brands and nonprofits use storytelling strategically to grow their audience, attract a community and increase their impact. Uh, because I believe that every nonprofit has at least one story, if not many stories that could change everything for them if they just told, told those stories and showed them uh, to the world. So this is some stuff I, I want to Dr. Sharon, if you want to share this slideshow maybe with them at the end, if everyone's watching, if you would like access to the slideshow, I think that would probably be best because I'm not, I'm, I really don't want to get into too much of the minutia of stuff, uh, but really storytelling is all about show, don't tell. It's universal, right? Stories were before even language. I mean, storytelling on the cave walls were ways that our ancestors passed down vital information and messages to each other. And so storytelling is as old as time. And the one most powerful form of video uh, of storytelling is video storytelling. Right now, it's beating every other form of marketing. It's beating text. It's beating photos. And you're going to see that websites specifically that are utilizing video are their SEO is going bananas because they're, that's the one thing that's actually hooking and retaining visitors onto sites, onto social media pages, is engaging them in the way that you know I'm millennials, my, my generation and younger too is. And now even older generations, there, there's anything other than video just doesn't engage us as much. We want to, you know, flip through and find the video that engages us. And so this is the way across all platforms to engage. And it's the way because it, it's connecting emotionally and logically. Visual storytelling is, is we're proving to them through imagery rather than just telling them how they should feel. So that, that's sort of the overview. But uh, I'm not going to go through everything. Um, so I, I do want to just share with you, this is actually the video that I created and used. Uh, it was actually a mini documentary I had done on my family. And it was actually perfect timing because I had just done this mini documentary. And when this incident with the window happened, it was almost like everything had been set up where we just plugged this in and we were able to raise over a year of living expenses for my family. Uh, we had donors donating. We had someone from another state, had never met my family before, saw the video was so moved they donated $2,000 just from one single donor. So that really just goes to show that the power of, of storytelling and coming forward in a way that isn't pleading or telling people morally and trying to guilt them or any of that, those tactics, those like the salesy tactics, like trying to emotionally manipulate people is not what we're doing here. We are 
emotionally moving them, but we're not trying to manipulate people. And so this is essentially what, what, um, I'll just play the beginning. I made this video. Um, and you know, this is, let's see, let me go back. Okay. So I'm not going to play the whole thing. Honestly, I'm probably not even going to play it because I'm essentially just repeating what I, what I just told you here, but I just wanted to show you here, right? I, I talk, we show, we show, I'm visually showing what's, what's going on, the situation with my family my mom taking care of my brother. So, so people can visually see the story. Um, and it, this is removing judgment. This is removing people's ability to say, well, what if it's like, no, look, check it out. This is the situation. This is the story. Um, and so as we go through here, I, again, I'm basically just repeating this, the story that I told you, but here's where I implemented the mini documentary. Now we're going in depth with the storytelling strategies that I'm, I'm now going to, to share with you after. But um, just to give you a quick one minute view as to how people kind of, it, what we did was we created a window for people to really see and step into our world. If it's a good night or a good day, Daniel will sleep eight hours. Um, in the morning, we usually get him up around seven, help him bathe him. Uh, it takes me and Kathy to to give, give him a bath. Uh, we get him ready for therapy. Um, he dresses himself partially uh, with a little help. You can do it. Good. Good job here. One more, one more. Daniel's uh, autism was a little special in the fact that he was very self-injurious. So uh, unlike other autistic children that have just maybe hand flapping and um, do certain behaviors, Daniel started displaying aggressive behavior towards himself. So he'd hurt his hands, he started biting, biting his shoulders, his knees, and so it made it a little tougher, a lot more difficult for us to deal with. Um, but we still had a lot of hope and we, she, she put in a lot of her energy um, with finding some of the best doctors so that we can take him and, and give him hope. Um, so we can have some direction as to where we can lead him. So I'm, I won't play the whole video, but if you'd like, I could link a link if anyone would like to see the full documentary. Um, it's about eight minutes. And it really just, I wanted to create a window of understanding, a portrait of my family um, where no one could look at them and go, because a lot of people we would hear, people who really just didn't understand my parents, how much they loved my brother. It's, it's, a, it's my brother, but they would treat it like, well, if, if this is such an issue, why don't you just put him somewhere? Why don't you put him in a home? And those are the types of those are the types of prejudgments that you, any nonprofit is going to end up facing. And so this is something I, I found a lot of alignment with nonprofits after I did this, because I realized there's just so much prejudice, you know, for instance, with homelessness, people going, well, you know, they don't want to get better or this or that, or they're, they're lazy. They just, they don't, they don't want a job, like all of that stuff. And then it's like, if, if we were to just go and, and look and, and see just that one individual on the street and like what got them there, you'd probably fall in love and be like, how can we help this person, right? And I get very emotional about this stuff because I really do believe that behind every story is where you're gonna find a truth um, that anyone, that's gonna pull anyone in um, to want to help. So the first thing that I do when I go into a brand, a nonprofit uh, or a business is I ask, where are the stories that are going to differentiate what you're doing from the rest of, your competitors, the rest of the market. And so that really is what storytelling is. Um, it's a reason to, it's really the reason that you care is, is the, the first thing to start when you start digging into your story. And it's like, why do you care about what you do? Um, and, and these are things that are not immediately apparent to your audience. And that's something that sometimes behind our business, we'll just assume that everyone understands us as much as we understand our mission. And it's, it's really important to tell the story and craft it in a way that attracts the right community and doesn't do it in a way where we're not being genuine 
um, or we're, we're saying things to create the manipulation or, or that's something that's just not genuine. So many brands do this. They'll, they'll do, they'll copy other, something else, some other brand because they see, oh, well that's, but it's not genuine to you. And so storytelling really is the art of finding and then framing how we tell a story. Cause there's so many ways we can tell a story and it's our responsibility to tell it in a way that's authentic to us and that will attract the right type of community to us. And so I'm going to share with you what I believe is going to be the most helpful and the most impactful um, like stories I can share with you are the three most vital stories to specifically nonprofits. And these are like stories that I've seen individual nonprofits use to go from a single person with a goal and a mission to a multi, multi-million like nonprofit that is global, that is raising millions. And, and this is the, the three. So the first is the why story. Uh, so this really is a way to show your audience that you are in it, not for self-gain, but for others. And that you're not just going to take, you know, you're not a nonprofit where people go, oh, well, it's not, the money's not really going to the cause, right? Like a lot of people will have those prejudgments. This is a way of just basically knocking those, those um, objections out for sales, for a business. It's the same thing. So this story is going to ground you. It's going to give context and build trust by proving your purpose is genuine and worthy of your audience's attention. And the, the one way that I always dig into my clients' wise when, when we deep dive into their stories is asking them, what are the past events that shaped who you are today and made, made you care so much about what you're doing? And a lot of, a lot of people won't have done the work. They actually won't realize um, that there, there may have been something even past, for instance, seeing home, like some, like, again, I'm, I'm going to homelessness because to me, that's an impact that when I was younger, as I grew up, homelessness always really, whenever I saw someone on the street, it just broke my heart. Um, and there was a lot of like emotions. I would just well up in me, like just seeing someone on the street and other people wouldn't react the same way. And I would almost think like, am I weird? Because I feel this way. And then, and then as I started to help nonprofits with homelessness and started to align and, and really do my, do my part to help create change. I realized that it was because growing up, my family was always struggling, trying to keep their home. And that was a very real conflict for, for me that I experienced very personally. And so some, some, you know, I challenge everyone here today to really write this down. If, if you're taking notes, write down, why do I care about this cause? Uh, the cause that, that you're currently looking to build a nonprofit around. And um, it, it might surprise you because it, it's probably going to come from more than one past event. And so I challenge you to find all of the, as, as many of these past events that you can, can find. And these are going to be speaking points for you uh, that where when you talk about this stuff, it, it's instantly going to break down walls because you're not, you're no longer speaking, like you're no longer performing. Like, like right now, I'm not performing as I'm talking about this stuff because I genuinely care about it. And it's like, I know that this, there's, a, there's a connection here between us and everyone here probably understands and relates to this. And so that's just, this is one place where if you can not only find what really matters within yourself, but then you can find the through line that connects your audience to that, every great film you're going to find is like you can really relate to the character on screen and it's because of this effect because you really understand their their why all right so that's story number one number two is the fight story so when when done right this is easily the most powerful story you can tell it's going to be like the central well of emotion that you can pull from just infinitely you can you can develop your brand voice from this you can build authority around this story and and leadership around this because this really is where your cause from and this is it comes from the thing that angers you most or breaks your heart the most something something that is off in the world is something unjust and there's something that you need to change and you feel called to do, make a difference about. And, uh, and it's going to reveal your true voice every time and, it, and your passion. There's no way that you can really talk about your fight in a way that you're not passionate about or it's not your fight story. So I do challenge you to think about what is it that I'm fighting for and that lights me up 
and, and that I will break down walls for, because that is often times when you share that you can rally your tribe around that, your team, donors, volunteers, and they will break through walls with you. So, you know, when you unlock this, you're, you're talking, we're talking authentic messaging, genuine content is going to come pouring out of you. And you will really just, you shouldn't ever run out of content or things to talk about when you're talking about your fight story. And so um, that's number two. Sure. Here's a great example of a fight story, by the way. The why I kind of shared with my own story, as far as the fight story, Charity Water is a great example for anyone who's familiar with this amazing nonprofit. Um, they were actually one of the first nonprofits that I pledged like $30 a month to, to donate to. And it's because of their incredible storytelling across the board, but specifically one individual fight story where they just used one instance, one story to exemplify like the, a world, a worldwide issue, right. Of, of unclean drinking water, uh, hunger, famine, disease. And really by just telling the story of a young girl, and I forget which part of Africa, but in a town that they didn't have access to clean drinking water, the, they had to do a four mile, five mile trek every day. I think even longer, but they, what they would have to do is carry these big, heavy pots that they would build that they built uh, through cl with clay pots and the young the girls would, would have to go the woman and the girls of the village would have to go and and carry these pots on their head fill them with water and then we're talking like 40 50 pounds of water they'd have to carry on their head miles back to the town and what, what ended up happening uh, was the leader of charity water as he was traveling through Africa, he, he ended up coming upon a grave site and asked, what's the story behind this? And the town told him that a young girl, teenager, was coming back and dropped the, the, her, her family's um, clay pot of water. It shattered. And so now we're talking about, and this was like on her way back with the water. So it's like the whole day is, is pretty much ruined. She doesn't have the energy to go back. The pot is broken. That's the family's pot. And so now, it, so she was so devastated that she ended up taking her life on um, a tree outside of the town. And so they, they marked the grave there. And that's just an example of one single story that struck a nerve in an audience uh, and Charity Water with just that one story was able to just, I mean, that's the reason why I donated and, and so many others, I think, is, is just the power of one individual story. And so... And so, all right. So that's story number two. And um, story number three, this really is the call to action. This is where, okay, we understand the issue. We understand what it means to the nonprofit personally and why they care. Now it's about how, how are we making a difference and contributing? And so, you know, what is, what is the purpose of your nonprofit? Why do you exist? Well, it, there's the, there's the cause and then it's how you are making a difference. And that's your process. Um, that's your legacy, what you want to leave behind. So I would, I would challenge everyone, if you're going to write a note down here, is just the single, what is it I want to leave behind? And that's going to help. Imagine you're at the end of your life and this nonprofit, like what is the change that you, if, if you're at the end and, and you truly you know, can leave behind no regrets, what did you change in the world? And what is your, what is your vision? What is your, really what your mission is, is your movement. When you unlock the messaging behind your mission is where you're actually going to create a movement because other people are going to be able to now rally behind this contribution and want to contribute in this way. And so the best way to finish off a contribution message is with a call to action. And the most powerful way to create a call to action is not through, again, not through tactics. You're going to you hear a lot of tactics of using morals or telling people, you know, do the right thing. Uh, the, the best way is actually to give them a, give them the story and give them the opportunity to become a part of the story is one way that, you know, it really gives them the choice. And it, at the end, at the end of the day, everyone wants to become a part of something. No one wants to be sold. If, if you sell them, it, it turns on the, the part of their brain that goes, ah, this person is, they want something from me. 
But if, if, if you do this storytelling right, by the end, when you give them the call to action and you really give, it's, it's almost like they feel like, wow, you've given me an opportunity to, con to contribute with you and become a part of the story, become a part of the change. And so I hope that the text on screen isn't too distracting. Again, we can give you guys, we can give everyone the slides. Um, yeah, this is why I almost, I didn't even want to do any of this because I just really wanted to make sure that we're all present here and I wanted to be as present as I can be. So digital storytelling is all of this online, you know, on your website, on social media. Video is king when it comes to storytelling. Viewers retain 95% of information from videos. And now with the rapidly declining uh, attention span that we have, 10% of information from text. So viewer customer insights are changing and it's really important that we go with the times. And so the key to any good story, visual storytelling is show, don't tell. The less that we can we say and the more we can show visually and through through the words that we're saying, there's still ways of showing versus telling. And I want to give you all a, a quick tool. It's very, it's a very simple two sentences that I think can rapidly help build the way you communicate in a way that instantly gets people to understand, okay, here is what you do and here is who you are, which really the who is the why. And so, you know, another challenge is, you know, to go ahead and write this down. Blank is what we do. Blank is who we are. And this is actually a method that a, a mentor of mine uh, workshopped with me. So for instance, my video agency, Brand Story, crafting powerful stories is what we do. Creating lifelong community is who we are. That's just off the top of my head. I was just writing this out and I did this, but it's not like officially my tagline. But as you can see, like, it's not just the stories we tell. It's more about the why, like what we really care about is building that community, building a sense of um, connection online. And so that's just an example. So again, video is the most powerful form of storytelling. And I wanna make sure everyone is able to leave here today and not, and, and not feel like, well, if, you know, maybe I, you can't afford to, do, to, to get a video produced and that's fine because there is still so many ways that we all can use. I mean, everyone has phones now. So I wanna, I wanna give methods and, and ways to, to still be able to, no matter where you are, no matter what your budget is, to be able to accomplish and, and utilize all these techniques. I personally believe that every single brand, business, nonprofit, as they're growing, especially in their first few years, needs a two to three minute website brand story video, mandatory. Like, websites without it there's no connection there's nothing to feel and so i just have seen you know i've implemented just a single video into some of my very first clients when i was first starting out i was helping auto shops i was helping out very small um small businesses locally and just seeing the difference it is just i mean completely basically blew their competitors out of the water instantly made them created a window where everyone now in the town can see, okay, that's, that's who I'm going to be dealing with. Like the human element is so much more important than any, anything else when it comes to doing business or nonprofit. So the, the video is a way of creating the window, replicate it, to replicate that in-person conversation that you would have. And the brand story video encompasses all three key stories that I just, that I just shared with you, the why, the fight, and the contribution stories all in the same video. Please let me know if I'm going too fast, by the way, Dr. Sharon, or if any of this is like... No, this is perfect. I was just going to say it's wild in the chat box because all of us are like, oh, shit, we need to do this. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my God, I even need to do this at the nonprofit plug. So I'm over here like, <laughs> yeah, no, you're good. This is super helpful. We all need a brand. I mean, ultimately, there's a return on investment. And I would be happy. I would be happy to help lead up or just guide any workshop or mastermind to KF, by the way. a couple of people are asking about that exactly. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is so powerful to workshop. And this is also stuff that I one-on-one -on -one workshop with clients and we really dig deep. Uh, but there's methods of doing this. I mean, really just meditating on your story. You can just go so deep. Really, there's one thing that, so before I get into this, um, there was a book uh, by Dean Graziosi called Millionaire Success Habits. And in the book, he talks about 
um, going into his why. And what he did was he asked, I think he asked someone seven times what their why is. Like he asked them why seven times. So why are you doing what you're doing? The first one was what that person thought that he wanted to hear. The second one was what he thought was his why. And then the third one was really his why. And then as he kept going, number four, number five, number six, it's it almost, it, it's impossible not to cry because you're digging these layers of the onion, you're peeling back the layers so deep. And when you get to the root, that's, that is like the essence. And there's so much emotion there. Uh, it's powerful stuff. And, um, and that's, that's really what you, you want to try to get the, the deepest layer up towards your messaging, your website and branding. So the six beats of a brand story, number one is the hook. And this is often pulled from the fight or the why. So this is essentially, if we're going to create a two to three minute video, we're going to create a long form piece of content. We want to hook the viewer in early, even if it's a 30 second piece of content, like how can we hook them in the first few seconds? And I'm going to show you an example right after this of a video I did for a nonprofit that blew up their, their signups, their volunteers, major gifts, and more like they just, and it was just through this six step method that I'm now sharing with you. And typically this is, this is not stuff I share. Uh, this is very internal, but right. You know, I've, I've been helping so many, I can only help so many clients and I've got reached a point where in a few months, I'm actually planning on completely taking a hiatus and taking a break from video production for a few months, like the early, early fall. So I can actually go and speak more and, and just kind of give more value to the, the, as many people as I can, because there's only so many people I can help one-on-one -on -one through video production, right? So number two would be who you are. And that's quick and easy. Introduce you, introduce your, your company. You can, you can use the, the, what we do and, and, and who we are. Um, number three would be the why, right? We've already dug, we already dug into the, the why and the fight. Uh, th this why, if we're doing it in video format, you can, you can either choose your the why story, why, you know, the more personal story, which is easily, that, that one's going to create more, um, it, like personal connection with an audience. Like if you have a personal brand, if you are speaking, then this is a really way for, for you yourself to connect. But if we're talking a more, if you're speaking more from your brand, or if you have representatives, uh, then you really want to use a fight story instead. Um, and that's just way as a universal story that anyone in your organization can share. Four is what you do. And we keep this as concise as possible. We don't want to get into the nuts and bolts of what you do um, because you're, you're going to start activating again, the, like that, that part of the brain that starts analyzing things. And the more you, your audience starts to analyze, the more they're going to analyze how much money do I have in my pocket? How much can I donate? So we don't want, we don't want to get them to logical because they're, they're just gonna start price, pricing everything out. We really wanna hit them just with emotion because when with emotion, it's like, what do I have to do? Like, it's, you know, we, we can get swept up in emotion and just, that's like some of the, you know, uh, like when I got my, my Tacoma, like I just got a new Tacoma uh, and a truck for, for, the, for the production company. But it was like, it was, I was just all emotional by, I was just like, oh my God, this is such a nice truck. And I'm going to be able to put my like equipment in. It's just all emotion. Right. I wasn't thinking about like, oh my God, this is like a big expense, but like totally worth it. Anyways, five is the how, and this is really going, this is where you can do, like talk about your process, but you really, when you talk about your process, you want it to really come from storytelling. You don't want to, again, you don't want to get too like technical with it. It's really, so you dig into your contribution, you can give an example of, for instance, a family, a story that where, where your contribution was felt and, and you saw a difference. You can give the before and after, for instance. T testimonials are extremely powerful here. And this is typically where I will put a testimonial in for a brand story. And then number six would be the call to action, which is the, the final invitation out of love, giving an opportunity to become a part of our story and our community. All right, let's keep moving. I'm glad everyone's this is enjoying what this. We can do. So hopefully this, I'm going to be able to, I'm going to play this all the way through. It's only three minutes. And this gives, I think is just going to exemplify everything that I've just shared with you. This was the very first nonprofit story I ever, I ever produced. This was all through I didn't have any of these like 
storytelling techniques at the time. This was back in like 2018. So this was all just intuition as a filmmaker and storyteller. And then I sort of reverse, I reverse engineered like, okay, here's what we're doing. Um, but really good storytelling comes from intuition and it comes from like just understanding your audience, understanding where the disconnects are and then building bridges through the storytelling. And so the biggest, before I play this, I will say a little backstory here. Um, I, a friend of mine, Chris Smith, big entrepreneur, business consultant coach. Um, I helped, I helped him tell his story and like double his, his revenue. And he was already doing like, we were talking, it's like six figure, seven figure business, but he connected me with a friend of his, Mike Sherbakov, who ran the greatness collective. Now this, um, nonprofit does house builds. And at the time I, I didn't know what that meant. I'm like, okay, house builds, so they're building a house, but like it didn't, in my mind, I didn't, sometimes your audience isn't going to connect those dots. And I even went to their site and it was just kind of archaic. Like it was kind of obscure. I was like, what's going on? I see there's community. They talk about community. They talk about impact, but I still just didn't get what the story was. And so the first thing I said was, Mike, you have to tell this story. Once I went and I shot it because I was like, dude, this is going to unlock everything for you guys. And once we did, I mean, he, I have a video where we watched this video for the first time with him and he straight up was just like, oh my God, this is going to 10X our signups and it's going to 10X our don donations and volunteers. And it did, they, they had the strongest quarter and strongest year after implementing this video across a website and socials. So here we go. It always amazes me at what we can do in such a short amount of time when a community comes together. The fact that when we show up, there's absolutely nothing there. And all of a sudden, at the end of the weekend, this house is built, two bedroom, loft, insulation, electric, and the family's walking in for the first time. <laughs> it's unlike any experience I've had. The first time I was invited on a build, that weekend completely changed my life. So I knew I needed to go back, I needed to bring people back, and I needed to share the stories and the people down there. And it's crazy because it's just, it's so close to home. You know, two hour drive across the border and it's an entirely different world. It wasn't long ago where they didn't name their children until they were a year old. They didn't want to get attached to them because the kids before one years old had such high chances of not making it. The problem is the kids are sick all the time because there's digestive and respiratory illnesses they're facing. The reason that that's happening is because they're, they're living on dirt. So you can imagine when it's raining and they're getting the water, the mud through their home. Reina, the, the mother, shared that her and her family have gone days without food. For Reina, Jorge, they're two amazing kids, Luis and Celestino. This home will make a difference because now they don't have to worry about saving up money to build a home, and now they can actually provide the basic needs, food and water for their children. This makes a huge difference, and yet how many of us feel resigned to the idea that we can't possibly make a difference? Well, this weekend was an example. We absolutely can make a difference. The fact that this community came together and decided to pick up not just the family, but also the community, to work with the kids in the different orphanages that we did, to feed the 150 families that we fed, to play soccer with the dozens of kids that wanted to come out and play with us, to give the piggyback rides that were given. That's the reason I keep going back six years later. That's the reason this community was built, because I know we can make a difference. I want to show people that we can make a difference when we come together with the intention to create a better world. The Greatness Collective is first and foremost a community of people who want to make a difference. We've got all of the resources that you need. When you actually come and join us and connect with other people on a project like this, it's completely life-changing. So my invitation for everyone is to become part of the collective if you share the values of wanting to make a difference, of wanting to create a better world and connecting with other people who share those same values with you. Okay, so what, what do we think? Whoa, <laughs> so, that was awesome. 
I'm sure I speak for a lot of people on here. That was cool. And all of us are probably sitting over here. Oh my God, can we have that for our nonprofit? I'm like, I want to do that for the nonprofit plug. <laughs> You, you should. <laughs> that was really good. Thank you. Um, no, yeah, I really just want to preface that this is possible for every nonprofit it, and there's it's possible in a, in a multitude of ways. So, you know, I thought th obviously the, the, the dream is to like get something produced by a director, by some, not a videographer. That's like a, you know, videographers don't really understand storytelling like most videographers. And I don't, I, I love videographers. I hire them. I love how they can capture and beautiful images, but um, really there's a difference. And it's, you know, what I, the work I do and that brand strategists um, like agencies will do is like, we really look for the psychology behind like a message and, and like storytelling and like that, that you don't really learn that in through, through like learning how to set up a camera and set up lights. And so that's one thing that I've seen that a lot of nonprofits and brands that I have ended up working with, um, they, they, the work that they had, they go, well, this isn't working. So video doesn't work. So, so storytelling doesn't work. And, and I go, no, it's, it's the way that it was done. It wasn't genuine. It wasn't authentic to your story. And maybe visually you showed some stuff, but as the, the audience, we don't really, we don't really get it. We're not really connecting on that deep emotional level. And so Hopefully some of what I've shared today through the three key storytelling helps, helps all of us understand more like if we're going to create content, if we're going to um, hire a videographer, if we're going to take it upon ourselves. And I do want to give a few techniques on how you yourself with just your iPhone, how everyone here can get started on a project, a brand story project for themselves, just you know, low budget at first and, and just get it working, get it bringing in money so that you can then start building up a budget, um, both for, you know, your nonprofit and, and for funding for what you want to do, but then also so that at some point you can invest in creating something that raises it really what it does when, when we capture this in, in, in a professional way through the interview, the process and bring someone like me on is, is, raising the social market value and, and, and raising the, the perception, the perceived authority of the brand and, and the nonprofit. And that's something that you might, that's the one downside that you, you might not get when you're doing amateur video, but the message is most important. So like, just, I always say to any brand um, who may not be ready to, to work with me, I, I always tell them, just make a video, just get it out there and just get it working for you. And so let's see. Uh, let's move forward here. There we go. Cool. So that's the end of the presentation, but um, a few more things, a few more tidbits that I'm, I'm, you know, I'm thinking of now I should have included is all you have to do to, when it comes to video and getting on video, it's very, it can be extremely, the reason why most businesses don't do video. And when I just brought that up, I'm guessing if most of us, have some in the back of our heads. We're like, I don't want to be on video. You know, that's, that's nerve wracking. I don't want to show up. I don't want to post content. You know, I, I, I totally understand. Cause that was me and it still is. I hate content. I, I, it's funny. Cause I'm the one that I do that for all my clients, but I hate doing it for myself. I hate it. Ugh. You know, I don't like how I look on camera. I don't like how I, I, I hear myself talk and I go, Oh my God, dude, you sound, you know, but okay. All that aside, when I started implementing my own brand story in my own video production company, I had my most successful, my most successful year. So it's like, you have to do it. We have to do it. And we have to find a way to, to find the, to change our mindset and, and find tools to show up and be able to do this. And so the one thing that I always advise and, and, and tell everyone is do not script, do not use scripts. It, that's the, first, the number one way you're going to have to try to remember all these lines and, and that's going to frustrate you. I, I'm telling you, you, you get on a camera and 30 minutes in, you're not hitting the lines, right? It sounds, it comes off like a robot. And it's because like in, in business and in life, someone comes through your door and, and you, and in person, you're not, you're not pulling up a script and, and reading off it to them, right? That would be so awkward. So we have to find a way to become authentic on camera and, the, the way that I have taken clients who were even more anxious and, and resistant to the camera than me, 
I had a client who had for 10 years dealt with anxiety and depression and didn't want to deal with this at all. But she knew that her, she had to take a stand for her story. She, she knew she, there was people in the world that she had to help. And so all I did was created a safe space for her to be able to communicate without worrying about time limitations, without worrying about how she came off. And the way that I, I suggest everyone here is if you have a loved one, if you have someone who you can talk to comfortably and be really be yourself, you know, and, and, and be yourself, give yourself the time to breathe and talk normally and not, you know, to try to say everything fast. Or So if you have someone in your life, a friend, a family member, what I would do is prepare an interview with that person where you, you know, you, you can prepare the questions for them, give them the questions and then set the camera to the side on a, you know, tripod, a table tripod, anything. Um, get a single key light off Amazon, 30 bucks, 20 bucks, you know, for a ring light, just so you can get some nice, even lighting, look professional. And then, um, and then, you know, proceed to go through those six story beats that I laid out earlier, the, the introduction, the who, the what, and so, so I hope, thank you so much for the feedback, everyone. I'm, I'm glad this is landing and that everyone is finding value um, because I was having a lot, like getting on camera in front of everyone. I, I was having like my, oh, oh my God, is anyone, is, does anyone, is anyone going to care about this? So I, I'm glad to see people care and that this is, this is, you know, impactful stuff for everyone. Um, but, but that's, that's the key is really just get on camera, speak from the heart without a script. Just try to remember those six beats and hit them in order and then show. So show, show image. If you have footage of the, the cause that you're, that you're dealing with, if you have, if you have footage and images and, and you have permission to share that, that's, that's the story and, and, and create the, create the story in a way that isn't fake, but that honors it and that is authentic to it. And yeah, I think that pretty much wraps it up, wraps it up. I mean, I, I want to give an opportunity if there's questions, I know we're coming up on the hour. If, if, um, if anyone has any questions or, or just like this, come up and speak Amber, if you, if, I mean, I'll take a compliment. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to say that I've been studying this in the for-profit space, um, especially about storytelling, VSLs, et cetera, you know, from the greats, Russell Brunson, and, you know, just so many in that um, community and, you know, and they've gone to great extent to write books, give frameworks, masterminds, et cetera. So I've, I've, I've heard some of these concepts, but the way you delivered it today, uh, you presented things that I've never heard before. And, um, and it was, it was impactful because it like immediately just what you said, you know, emotionally connected. So, um, you know, not only can you see the strategy, but the emotion that I had through your presentation, again, versus any of the other masterminds, some paid, some not, you know, and this is a legitimate authentic compliment um, because I have been head down studying this for a while because it is related to conversion. And this was, this was awesome. So congratulations. Thank you. You mentioned Russell Brunson, and I actually worked with um, the guru who guru Russell Brunson, funny enough. Um, the one who did all of the, um, the uh, what's his name? Rich Sheffrin. He was one of the first web, webinar webcasters. The webinar one. Yeah. And I follow him too. Yeah. Yeah. But I appreciate that. Yeah. I've, I've, I've been in the field for quite some time and then um, really just got caught up just really honing in. And recently the last uh, year, I helped um, a web three FinTech company raise 9 million uh, through fund and funding through a uh, seed round. But it really didn't like light me up as much as helping with nonprofits, small businesses, like really just like out, people out there like who are really um, purpose driven. This is really my, this is my crowd. Like this is my community. So I, I just, I'm so grateful for being invited here because this is really like where I want to be. 
this, I'm, I mean, this is like some of this info like blows me away. I can't even tell you how many times people are always telling us like, and Amber and I talk about this all the time, like, oh God, we just, we need to get on video and just kind of like F it, like just freaking do it and get on there and get in front of the camera and produce some stuff. Cause you're right. People do, they want to see the visual of it instead of the emails and the texts and all the stuff. And they want to feel a part of the mission or a part of the solution and what's going on. So this is super cool. I mean, I, I wrote some stuff down. I was like, oh God, I've got some things that need to be implemented and I'll open it up now. We've got a, a couple of minutes left. I'd love to open it up for questions. If anyone has questions with Evan, his, I put his Instagram is up on the screen. If anyone wants to reach out to him. I'll go ahead and link directly. Uh, the documentary as well. I'm going to link that in the yeah. chat as well as a, um, a That'd link be perfect. to anyone. I always offer, I offer complimentary strategy sessions with, so I offer one complimentary strategy session, 30 minutes to help you think more about your story um, and, and, and ask more questions pertaining specifically to your story to get you going. And then, you know, if we'd, if you would like to talk more about getting a video done or doing one-on-one -on -one consulting, I'm, I'm open to that as well on the call, but but I'm just happy to give value guys, so. I'd like to take a minute to expand on who we are, what we do, if that's okay. Um, Jared, we're gonna run out of time for that today. So let me hold that until we do another one. I wanna get a couple questions and then I have to oh. close this out right I would, I would love, I would love to do a workshop by the way, where we, we go yeah. through other ones. That would be awesome. So Jared, I, yeah. thank you for bringing that up because I would love to do that and then workshop them with you guys and give some feedback. That would be perfect. Um, so Jared, we'll do that. We'll do that another one, especially as we get more into funding and stuff too. Joe, I see you got a hand up. What's your question? Um, in regards to consent, you know, um, like I, I know when recording, you know, we there's times where you you have to say, like, you know, you, you have to ask for a consent um especially with minors um i don't know if you have any guidance or like how that works because my i mean i work with all ages but my focus is youth so i i know there's different legalities and i don't know like the laws and stuff behind like taking pictures and then using them on social media or website? Yeah, absolutely. Um, no, that's a great question. So yeah. oftentimes, um, like when I was first starting out, I would like freak out about this stuff and I would like take the waiver, like waivers everywhere. And I'd like get everyone to sign waivers. Like if they appeared in the background and stuff. And then the more I did it, the more I realized like no one cared. They saw the cameras were out and like we were rolling. And so like, if they didn't want to be on camera, they would like let us know. But also we would like, like ask like, hey, you know, if you're going to do an interview, you know, as long as that person on camera knows they're being interviewed, it's like, hey, can we use this for our website? Can we use this for, can we use this to share the story, like inform other people, let them know about, like, if you're going to frame it and like, uh, you know, you want to make sure that you're asking them in a way that like, they feel like they are contributing to, to helping others um, have that same impact, right? So it's like, if, for instance, like, the family who had their house built on that on that um, house build video, it was really just like, hey, we, we would love to help more families. Can we share? Can we interview you? Can we share um, your story so that we can then show the world what's what we're doing here and help more families like you? And uh, like nine out of 10 times, they're going to be like, yes, like we would love to be help. Now that kind of makes them feel like, OK, then now we're through sharing our story. We are becoming a part of helping others and giving back and, and just creating that cycle, so. But what, what, what if they're not like interview type settings, more like say if uh, say if we're at City Hall or say if we're like in public or in a general crowd. rule, General rule public is you're good. Like if you're shooting in public spaces and you're shooting B-roll or anything like that, like public is public, like recording is legal and it's, it's not illegal to film anything or anyone in, that's view visible by the public. Like, like look at paparazzi, right? So it's like, as long as you're doing so in a way that's respectful and not like infringing on anyone's like privacy, then like you'll, you'll be okay. Specifically when it comes to, to minors and like children in the area, if you can put up a sign that says filming's in progress, 
like let just get, like generally just let people know so if they don't want to be a part of it then they'll just like walk away okay great makes sense i just don't want to get sued <laughs> <laughs> all right so i'm so sorry we got to close this out today i know we've got so many more questions nicole did you want to try and get a question in there real quick Oh, yeah, just very briefly. One, thank you so much for this presentation and for coordinating. Thank you, Evan. Thank you, Dr. Sharon. This was extremely, extremely helpful. Um, one question that I th thought that was really helpful was bringing out the call to action portion. And so I know that we've been more speaking about kind of a general brand strategy video, but when you're doing like shorter shorter videos more just about like information or kind of like updates just to kind of keep that video present do you recommend that like shorter informative videos also have a call to action or should the call of action video only be kind of on your main brand strategist video that's a great question um and it really is a case-by-case -case basis of whether of what the goal is for the piece uh, you don't want to like you don't want a call to action on every single thing because then it's going to it's going to start to feel like, OK, they want something from me. So right. it just really it, it comes down to the objective of the individual piece. And when there is a contribution story involved or there's some there's something that it's like you just have to think about your audience. And it's like if they would if they like if what you're sharing with them would make them want to have some there's something for the next step for them to take after the content, then it's then it's it's totally reasonable to share a call to action. Got it. Thank you. That's really helpful to think about. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Um, Kylie, I, I noticed Kylie has worked with Greatness Collective and she said that after she saw that video, she got involved. And I just think that's amazing because that's like, I've, I went on some sweets, like on future builds with them after doing the video. And like so many people were like, I'm here because of that video. I was like, oh, that's amazing. I, I love it. So it's just, it's so powerful. Awesome. Cool. Okay, you guys. Well, you see on the screen how you can contact Evan or Amber and I at the nonprofit plug, and we'll send out a, a follow-up email for today with slides and links and stuff like that. And then we'll send out more information. We're going to be doing this at least every Wednesday for a little bit uh, of time because these are just so much fun and it's great info. Evan, like that was awesome. So I appreciate you and thank you so much everyone for joining us today. We'll see you guys next week. Bye everyone. Thank you. Thanks Bye. for having me.